Hey guys, so I am back again with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be focusing on tune shaders. I think it's a well-deserved video and a lot of people have been wondering how to achieve a Wind Waker style of shading, meaning that very cartoony, very flat, very smooth looking style of shading which can be difficult to achieve. Um, I also want to mention I got a new microphone, which I'm very excited about and I hope you're excited about too. So let's get started. So I'm just going to start with a brand new scene so I can avoid any confusion. Set it to perspective mode, I'm going to delete this cube, and then I'm going to import or append my model. For those of you who don't know what append is, it's basically adding files from another Blender folder instead of importing an FBX. I like using append if I'm just transporting files from one Blender file to the next. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a second window so I can see how my render is going. And so far there's absolutely nothing here, which is a good start. I'm going to go into my object here, and I am going to switch to Cycles. Cycles is where the magic really happens, Cycles is where the Tune Shader will work. I'm not sure how to do this in Blender, if somebody has figured that out, I would, be, I would love to know. Anywho, so once you're in Cycles, you're going to want to go ahead, let me get rid of this, and add a new material. You're going to want to switch to Views, to Views BDSF to the Tune BDSF. You can see you are already starting to achieve some of that Wind Waker appearance, but it's not quite there yet. You're going to want to go into Color and click this little dot here. You're going to want to do an image texture, and you're going to want to open your UV map. I've already created a texture atlas for this character. Um, if you want to know how to do that, I have videos explaining that, and I can ha link that in the description. So once you have your UV map on your character, it's really important because I just want one material. I want this tune material to be affecting all of my character, not just one material at a time, which you can still do, but it gets really messy. Once you have that done, I'm going to go ahead and delete this light and add my own. So I'm going to go Shift A and I'm going to go to Lamp. And then you have a couple different options here. I'm not entirely sure about the difference between them, but I've figured out a couple things that I've kind of remember and keep in mind when I have them in. I'll just go ahead and show you the difference between these lights and how they affect the model, but also the tune shader. So you're going to notice right off the bat that it's horrifying. It's bad, right? It's got, it's like crispy. There's like horrible polys everywhere. This is like nightmare fuel. This is not Wind Waker. So the easiest way to fix that problem is to open up this submenu over here and go into edit mode with your character. Select everything, go to shading and UVs, faces, and smooth. So what this does is this changes the way the polys are rendered on the model. There is smooth shading and flat shading, and I'm pretty sure you can do this with most 3D programs. Um, when you do smooth shading, it kind of, I'm not sure technically what it does, but it makes the entire model soft, round, it kind of creates this almost artificial smoothness without adding subdivision surfaces, which is really useful. So, to achieve that Wind Waker level of smooth softness, I'm going to go ahead and smooth my entire model. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Environment tab because there's this really awful, dark kind of shadow being cast on her. And the way I offset that the best is by going into the little world icon here, which is in World, uh, going to Surface and use Nodes. And I am going to change this color to something brighter because the world light is essentially casting an ambient light all over her body, so it's going to light her up as well as the scene. I like to kind of make it a sky color because it feels natural to me. Like someone could conceivably be standing under a uh, skylight and it would look real. We just want to make it light enough that she doesn't have harsh dark shadows on her anymore. So already we're getting a more pleasing look just from that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with some of these lights. If you click the light and you go into the setting here that looks like a yellow light, you can see all the settings of the different types of lights. So I'm going to quickly go through and tell you what I notice is the difference between these. The point light seems to be kind of like an orb of light that you can move around the character but with no ability to rotate, scale, or do much else. Um, you can make it brighter 
or you can make it softer. And you can move it closer, or you can move it further, but that seems to be the about extent of control you have over this light. With the sunlight, which is one of the ones I like the best, it kind of acts like the sun does in our world. That is, if the sun is moving over the sky, the effect of light on the body moves with that. The shadows change direction over time. You see these in games when they have um, day-night systems. So I really like the sun lamp. You can move it around, but moving it doesn't really do anything. The only real difference is with this rotation aspect. You can also control the strength of it. Spotlight. Spotlights tend to be pretty weak, so you have to pump them up a little bit. But they behave as you'd expect, like a spotlight. You can rotate them and you can move them, but overall they they don't really rotate like the sun lamp does. They just kind of rotate in place. As you can see on her, there's no difference if I move this left or right. It's just the angle at which the spotlight is moving around. Um, with that, you can also make this beam wider or smaller. You can kind of imagine like someone putting a cup around it to make the light smaller. You can also make the blend shape around the spotlight bigger and smaller. So this could be useful for some things. Not my favorite to do with tune shading, but can definitely be used for it. As you can see, it doesn't make it too bad. It is not, it's not too bad. There's also the Hemi lamp, which has a tendency to be very, very powerful. Um, so you have to turn it way down. And the Hemi lamp um, is similar to the sun lamp. I'm actually not too sure what the difference is. Uh, I actually really like using this one as well. I think it gives a really large, beautiful kind of appearance. I like lights that are large because I feel like with tune shading it looks a little bit more natural. You would kind of want a tune shader and a light to affect the whole model at once instead of just like a spotlight effect. And the last one is area which is another weakish one. This one is also this one doesn't have any rotation aspect. Like the point lamp you can bring it closer and further away. This lamp tends to have kind of a really beautiful soft appearance. I tend that to think that it looks better than the point light. Sorry if I don't know too much technicality about these lights, it's just what I have observed in an artistic sense. So today I'm mostly going to be working with hemi lights and area lights because I really like the appearance of the large light that has the rotation aspect and I like the soft kind of beautiful light of the area light. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you about my setup now. I like to generally have one light that lights the model from the side, like a three quarters view. I don't really like to use it, do it from the front because you tend to get this like really scary kind of like campfire thing going on. It's not, it's not great. So I like to do it from three quarters view. That way it really accentuates the shape of the face. I think I might actually change this to a hemi light just for the minute and see how that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down to one. And I'm going to try and rotate it until I find the most pleasing shape on the face especially. Because the body is probably going to look okay regardless, but the face is what's really going to matter here. So I'm just going to keep moving it until I get something I'm pleased with and I think looks pretty acceptable. Oh, another thing is the sun lamp, and the sun lamp tends to give this like soft appearance. I'm not really sure why the hemi lamp doesn't. It tends to look more wind wakery. So I'm just going to go ahead and again keep using that. Okay, I'm going to go with that. I think that looks pretty good. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rim light. So I'm going to press Shift D on this light, and I'm going to rotate it so that it's behind the character. I like to add a rim light because I feel like it makes the character pop a little more. It makes it look a little bit more advanced, professional, I'm not really sure. I just know that a lot of professionals use rim lights, and I think it looks quite good. So for that, I'm going to take a light. I'm not. It doesn't really matter because this is just going to be kind of like a really powerful, like really white light. So I only use a sun lamp just because you don't need high settings to get a really white light effect. And then I'm just going to keep moving it around until I get the effect I'm looking for. Okay, the final thing I want to do, it, uh, this is kind of an experimental method of mine, I want to add kind of a fill light over here so that it adds a little bit of color. Um, when you try and do this and add two lights on different sides of the body, it makes this horrible kind of effect. So one thing I do about that is I switch it to a different type of light that has a size factor. Like, let's try sun lamp. And then when you increase the size of this, the actual size of the lamp doesn't change, but the softness of the light itself changes. It goes from being like a very sharp, high intensity light, like a lamp, to being way more diffuse, like, like a foggy day. And so I pump that up. And I'm going to add some color. You strengthen that until we get it to a point where it like is very subtle. And then from this point you can just add in color. You don't necessarily have to do this. I find that it can just add a little bit more interest to the model. Like see now I have this like purplish fill light. It gives it just a little more. There's yellowish. Blue. I'm gonna go with this like purplish color. I think it looks pretty. And that's pretty much it. That's my basic workflow. And if, from this point, it's just all experimentation. It's moving your lights around. It's playing around with shape. But it's mostly just these settings with different light setups. You can try adding HDR lights, which I find to look kind of bad. But it's all just messing around with the background color and these and the color of lights and the intensity. And I hope you enjoyed that. That will be all for today, and I, I'll see you next time. Bye.